Okay. This is where the students get their marks. They get five marks each for these things, grammar and vocabulary. Obviously, this is at KET level, to be interpreted at KET level. So we realise they have limited grammar and vocabulary, and the marks are awarded for their success in using them, not necessarily accuracy. So even to get full marks, to get the absolute full marks, they can make lots of mistakes. As long as it's, the message is clearly um, transmitted, uh, that is all that is required. Pronunciation, it just needs to be intelligible. Uh, so the pronunciation is not penalised unless it becomes unintelligible and the examiner can't understand it. They will still get marks. Uh, interactive communication, so this is to do with the level of prompting and help and support they need from the examiner. Sometimes candidates get into so sort of paralysed that the, the examiner actually has to sort of intervene, and that's very bad. Uh, really, candidates should try and keep the communication going. So, what's expected? Candidates have limited linguistic resources. Yeah? This is known and understood. Utterances will be short. Inevitable. Pronunciation will be heavily influenced by L1. That's to be expected. And there will be hesitations and pauses. So in other words, all of that is allowed and the student could still get full marks if they communicate well and, um, and say enough. Okay. So just to summarise, high-scoring candidates develop the conversation and expand answers, ask for clarification if necessary, and interact and respond appropriately. So that's really what's being looked for. Um, Low-scoring candidates are difficult to understand, give very short answers or simply read the prompt material and interact inappropriately. So, for example, you know, they answer the wrong question 